Once upon a time, there was a fat little kid in the Dominican Republic, and he was constantly being bullied for his weight and his interests. Every day, he'd come home, and well, he was covered in bruises, or he was sometimes drenched in water. His parents really put that much thought into it, because A, who could you go for something like that? He felt like he couldn't go to anybody. And B, who believes in that kind of stuff in the early 90s and late, in the late 90s and early 2000s? One day, he came across a Nintendo DS Lite, and on it was Nintendogs. This is one of the first Nintendo games he'd ever played. Sure, there'd be, there was games back home like Spyro's Adventure or Crash Bandicoot, but this was different. This was a game where you had to put aside your genocidal tendencies and actually care for something else, otherwise defenseless. This taught him that even though he wasn't in the best position right now, there was somebody worse off that could still manage to smile. So he should too. In a not so shocking turn of events, that kid was me. Hi, my name is George Santan. I'm about to blow your mind and open it up at the same time. <laughs> when people think about gamers or video games, they think of 12 year old kids calling each other derogatory terms for sexual orientations or <laughs> insulting each other's mothers or Call of Duty. But that's, even though it's a frightening reality, it's only a small percentage of the game community as a whole. And yes, I said community. Like any other form of social communication or fandoms, we have our own celeb we have our own community with celebrities like FaZe. And for those of you who don't know, a fandom is basically like a pop culture cult, but it's a good one, don't worry. They just make you cry at certain words like Bucky or Bad Wolf or I'm with you to the end of the line or it's you know, so on. They delve into things that you never thought possible, and you really can't watch the show the same way twice. Anyways, gaming as a whole has had a lasting impact on the world ever since it came out way back when in the 1970s with Pong. Whoopsies. <laughs> Pong. <laughs> it's a video game classic, although some consider the untitled Pong like game developed by William, and I'm not kidding on this, William Higginbottom, that's his actual name, to be the first ever video game. And all of these ushered in a new era of playing and social interactions. And it's, and it's reached mainstreamhood in the late 1970s and early 1980s. And obviously it's stayed there since then. Video games have made an impact to non-gamers, have made an impact to even to non-gamers. But before I go on, let's get a couple things straight. How many of you guys play video games? Now how many of you guys would consider yourselves a gamer? All right, well, there's more hands now. I don't know what happened. For those of you who don't know, a gamer is somebody who plays games. Frequency and duration don't matter. Even things like Flappy Bird or Angry Bird is someone who makes some game. Sort of. If we're like really stretching the definition of the word, but that's besides the point. <laughs> Crack myself up sometimes. <laughs> Video games had an impact in three major things. Tech, movies, and the economy. Now what does that mean, you hypothetically ask me? Well, I'm glad you're all curious, even though nobody raised their hands. <laughs> starting, breaking it down one by one, starting with technology. Video games... Whoopsies. Most of the consumer crap that we delude ourselves into thinking that we need is geared more and more towards gamers. Don't believe me? Check your phones. And the highest, the category with the highest downloads from is games. Some of the most biggest in recent trends. They're from games, most of the time. I don't know what happened to Dan Daniel and uh, what are those? That's, that wasn't us guys, okay? Just clearing that up. And some of the, the specs and mods that most of the time, and most of the computers, are actually helping the computers perform better. And they work for games. They can help, they can help a computer play games such as Titanfall or Borderlands. Now most, back in the early 2000s-ish, late 90s, having a computer like that was rare or it was custom made, or, you know, it was specifically designed gaming PC. And how? It's the norm. And like I said before, it helps, video, it helps computers perform better, except for Macs, those, those are for noobs. We don't, we don't talk about it. The only reason, the only way you can use a Mac to play a video game is if you use it as a mouse pad, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Moving on to movies. Some of the, Moving on to movies, Hollywood has a horrible knack of taking our favorite, our favorite video games and our favorite comic books and turning them into atrocious movies. But there's still some of, if not the highest, grossing movies in the years that premiered. Which coincidentally leads to my next point, the economy. 
How many of you guys like money? You guys, you guys like money? See, there's more hands up now. Ah, <laughs> Video games, they provide a new form of income and new jobs on the market for people like you and me. Not me, because I'm 15 and I can't get a job. Okay. They, they put new jobs on the market, which puts more people in the workforce, giving them a chance to go home to their families, an actual home to their families, and have food. And I think that's amazing. Video games, they... They've fed people like you and me. They've actually helped people not perform. Yeah, I guess perform. They've helped people perform, they've helped people eat, they've helped people sleep, they put a roof over their heads, clothes on their back, and food in their bellies. And I think that makes video games sound amazing. Video games, they sound pretty great, right? I'm just pulling here. Do they sound good to you guys? They sound great to me. And it gets even better. As video games, they don't cause violence. And to briefly sum up the topic that warrants its own TEDx, violence in video games is mostly for displacement. For those of you who don't know, displacement is a form of venting your emotions to something else or insert reasons here. Whether it be stress from life, stress from your family and your friends, or stress from, I guess, that weird thing that's on your back that you don't want to touch and you want to go to the doctor for. <laughs> Uh, as, as I said before, video games, this is just my right? Yeah, just pulling your stuff from my Video games, they help you in ways unimaginable. And they also bring a dark side with them. Now, they pose some questions and they pose some things that we don't want to think about because we're too emotionally handicapped or we're too PC or we're too something. They talk about things that you and I aren't comfortable talking about with a crowd like this. Things like murder, rape, suicide, depression, substance and alcohol abuse. Now you'd think that there aren't many games like that, but surprisingly, there are a few. Yeah. Before I go on, yeah. the game The Last of Us. It's a beautiful game. It has a moving story. But it poses some questions. What would you do to protect the people that you love, the people that you care about? Or what will we do as a society when everything goes to hell? We want to think about questions like these, and we want to think about topics like these for the same reason that we repress emotions, and the same reason that we just hide away our true feelings or our true desires. It hurts. It's too much for us. It's too much mentally. It's too much physically. Because God forbid that we can actually have a real, genuine conversation and have a coherent thought process. There are a couple other things. Not the, oh, got dark first. There are a couple other things. Five Nights at Freddy's. It's a game where, yeah, it's a horror, for those of you who don't know, Five Nights at Freddy's is a horror and somehow fan fit this furry fan fiction spawning spectacular. It hit the scale, it hit the stories of Steam about two, three years ago. And in it, a grown man murders six innocent children <coughs> and stuffed their lifeless bodies into animatronic suits. And those suits are doomed to forever haunt the halls of a Chuck E. Cheese ripoff. <laughs> or, you know what? Sorry, you're never gonna have a problem. Or, just, you're gonna have to watch this channel on YouTube to find out more. He has like, a whole series on it. It's very cool. Video games also talk about, and they also talk about things like depression, which I've mentioned before. And I'm pretty sure most of you thought that I didn't get a gloss past it. Or, you know, I wasn't going to mention it at all, just because I wanted to mention it to throw something out there that got to your feelings. No, you're wrong. To be perfectly honest with you, I've had that dark spot in my life as well. I've thought about suicide, and I've had depression, and I'm still dealing with the after effects of it. And one of the ways that I can cope with it is video games. They've taught me things that it's, isn't, that I never thought I knew before. I'm choking up here. So good. <laughs> They present things to the public, you and I, that we don't want to talk about. And they have problems from history and time that we don't really want to talk about, and we just want to shove it under the rug. Ah, oh, cool, there's a rug here, I didn't realize that. They want to shove it under the rug and not mention it for the rest of time. Things like slavery, and Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry, where you play as a liberated slave coming back to your homeland, and you're trying to, you know, liberate the slaves. 
war. Revolution, both forms, whether it be peacefully or violently, like it is in this game. The game Home Front Revolution is about, well, self becoming, so check it out once it gets. Or Earthbound. Now, this is a classic game, and most of you guys probably don't know what it is. And that's cool, because it's like super old. We don't, it's, it's really old. Um, dude, there was this scene in the game, and it spoke to you. You enter a certain town with your motley crew of humans and insectoids and lizard people, or what have you, and you were forced into the police station. Once you're there, you're shoved into a room, and there's five people waiting for you. A police sergeant and four beat cops. And they proceed to try to beat you down, but that's the protagonist of the game. You're supposed to overcome that and get to the next level, whatever. Does that remind you of something? If it doesn't, well, I wouldn't blame you. Like I said, we're too PC to talk about things like this, so we shove it under the rug. This is an allegory to the LA riots and the beating, the brutal beating of Rodney King. If you don't know what that is, Rodney King, he was an African American man, such as myself, thank you for noticing. And he committed a small crime. In this crime, he was run over, not run over, but he was run off the road, and there were five people waiting for him once he got out of his car. Can you guess? A police sergeant four beat cops, and they beat him almost to death. He was bloodied, he was bruised, and he wasn't all that ugly. The expression of a face only a mother could love did not apply here. The creators of these games, they saw things like this. And they saw how people like you and me, we don't want to talk about this. And for what reason? Why should we hide ourselves from the reality of the world that we live in? Why should we censor ourselves when there's no reason for it? There's no reason for it. I guess we can censor our language you know, when there's kids around. But censor topics like these? That's just infuriatingly mind-boggling. Also how we belittle gamers like myself, or we belittle game developers when they try to present things like this. Have you ever seen a gamer and you look at them and you're like, wow, he's such a loser. He probably doesn't have a life. He does. I think, maybe. I don't know, it depends on the gamer, like me. <laughs> but most of the time they do. They have families, they have lives that they go back to. And they use gaming as a sort of displacement or as a way to get out of the reality of this hell world that we live in. It's not a place that we want to talk about. They, they also talk about suicide. I know I mentioned that before, and I kind of skipped past this, but this is a game called Heavy Rain. And in it, you play as a parent, trying to get their, parent, trying to get their child back from their kidnapper. And the kidnapper has you doing ludicrous things, like chopping off your fingers, or your entire arm, or peeling off your fingernails one by one, only as they watch at you, they look at you, laughing maniacally. If this sounds like Saw, I wouldn't be surprised. Wow, okay, never mind. I thought I had another slide there, but whatever, we'll get past this. Heavy Rain is a prime example of what a parent must go through. Now, you're looking at your parents a little bit differently, aren't you? They'll do anything for you. And in this game, the developer thought, why don't I use that to my advantage? Why can't I be sadistic and insane to try to take a child away from their parent? It sounds screwed up, I know. When I played it myself, I was just like, what am I doing? Ah! But I also understood. Because when I look at my niece, she's only four years old. I have another one. She's two years old. They're adorable. I love them to death. My sister, I love her to death. I love all my family. When I look at my niece, I look at her and I'm like, Sophia, I love you and I'd do anything for you. And after playing that game, I took on a whole new meaning, which I understood. Now, video games, they're different than what you thought, I think, probably. I hope that I opened your mind up, and I really hope that I also blew it, too. Thank you.